Hello and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about adiabatic mixing, a very important concept in HVAC because there are a lot of cases we, where we're going to be mixing different air streams. So let me do a quick schematic draw of this. Imagine you have two different air streams. They don't have to be coming in at 45s or anything special like this, but we have two streams of air that are mixing and we'll say this is Airstream 1 and it has average properties, it has an average temperature, it has an average specific humidity ratio, average pressure, uh, all these different things. Along with State 2 over here, this Airstream also has these same things. I'm going to label them T2, Omega 2, P2 and we get something mixed out. At, we'll call this State 3. Now another important point about this is that I've labeled this as adiabatic mixing, which adiabatic means no heat transfer. So that means that there's no external heat transfer and you can imagine that as being some ductwork that's very heavily insulated. That whatever is happening outside these boundaries is really not affecting these air streams. Now we also haven't mentioned it, but we're also assuming that there's no work being done on our system. And if for any good thermodynamic problems, you have to define the control volume. And so we're defining it as this air, this volume of air right here. And this is an open system because you have mass flowing in and you also have mass flowing out. But again, there, is, there are no fans in here, there are no paddle wheels, we're not, we don't have a piston moving this air. We just have flowing air coming in from two different streams that we've given average properties to and we have it escaping. And a lot of times we'll know these items over here, these properties of the streams, and we want to know what is the temperature that comes out, what is the enthalpy that comes out, what is the humidity ratio that comes out. And we can use some basic thermodynamics to figure that out. So our two major tools in thermodynamics when dealing with open systems are the energy balance along with the mass balance. Now if you haven't taken a course in thermodynamics I would encourage you to do so. So let's go ahead and let's start with the energy balance. So let me scroll down a little bit and we'll start with the energy balance. As again, we stated earlier, there are no external heat or work terms, and so the only energy terms related to this system are those with the flow energy, as some people would call it. So what we'll have, we have the energy going into the system has to equal the energy out. When we're doing this on a rate basis, so actually the power in is equal to the power out. So what's going in? Well, we're talking about things from state one up here, and we're dealing with the mass term. So we have the mass flow coming in, and we could either break this up. Remember, there's some internal energy related to this flow, which we usually use U, and there's energy that's required to move this air that was here out of the way. And that's part of flow work. And this is going quite quickly for this but I'm just reminding you of what enthalpy really is it's a combination of internal energy along with this flow energy and we have the same thing for state 2 and what's going out while well, we have the mass flow rate of air at state 3 multiplied by the average enthalpy at state 3 the other item we have, I'll do this in a different color, is our mass balance. We know mass is conserved, so mass flow in has to equal the mass flow out. And this we're assuming in a steady state process, so we've reached steady state, so otherwise this may not be true if it wasn't steady state. But once you're steady state, this has to be true. And that means that m.1 plus m.2 
has to equal m dot 3, the mass flow rate out. And so we have two equations here. We have this hidden and this. And now we can do some algebra on that and get some interesting results. So the first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to take this m dot 3, which is equivalent to m dot 1 plus m dot 2, and I'm going to substitute that in up here. So let me do that substitution. So I have m dot 1 enthalpy at state 1 plus m dot 2 enthalpy at state 2 and I'm gonna make a substitution here that's m dot 1 plus m dot 2 and that's multiplied by h3 from here I'm gonna collect the m dot 1 terms on this side and m dot 2 terms on the other side so over here I have m dot 1 h1 from this now if I expanded this I would have this multiplied by this and if I bring it to the other side I have to subtract and I do the same thing on this side. This is that term multiplied, and now I have to take this term, move it over here, which means I also have to subtract there. And obviously now I can pull out an m.1 on this side, m.2 on this side. So let me quickly do this algebra. And now we can kind of do this cross division. So I'm going to put this on the denominator over here, and I'll put M2 on this side. So what we end up getting is the ratio of the mass flow rates is equivalent to this ratio of enthalpies. And this is important because what this is essentially saying is that if you draw this on a psychrometric chart, that the ratio between the flows is also going to be the ratio between your differences in enthal enthalpies. Now I also purposely skipped over the fact that when we were up here I've discussed this as if it was just dry air or air as a single entity but in HVAC a lot of times we also consider the uh, moisture in the air water vapor as a separate entity because it makes a very big difference and HVAC applications. So the other thing, we have this concept of dry air and moist air. This mass balance here was really on a dry air basis. But we also have a mass balance on uh, the water vapor. So if I had the, the M.1 of H2O plus M.2 of H2O, that has to equal the amount of water vapor coming out in the third state and what's nice is that we have this idea of specific humidity ratio where we can replace this instead use the same thing we had up here this m.1 which was considered for dry air and we can multiply it by a specific humidity ratio so and if you don't remember a specific humidity ratio that was the mass flow rate of water vapor or H2O divided by the mass flow rate over air. Well, I'm taking them as rates, but you could take them as static values too, the total mass over the total. But when you do this, you notice that you're really canceling, you're normalizing to flow versus dry air, and what you end up with is just the flow rate of the moisture portion. So we can do the same thing. And if you notice, this form is exactly the same as this form, except the H's have been replaced by omegas. And so this same algebra would follow through. I hope this isn't too much of a logical leap for you, that you would also get this ratio with the specific humidity ratios. So this also is equivalent. And lastly, a different form that's also useful is the fact that a lot of times we're solving for this output variable. Say we want to know the humidity ratio at the outlet of the two streams. We know what they're going to be like. If we just simply solve for that variable, we would get something that looks like, like such. where really this is a weighted average between the different ratios of the flow rates where we have the same denominator here and we know these two add up to this so this is really these two things this 
and this, if you took those two and added them, those would have to equal one. So if it's 50% of, of the air is coming from stream one and 50% of stream two, you're really going to get 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and you really get an average between these two streams. And so it's a very simple linear weighted average, and you could think of this as the percent of flow from each stream, from flow one, from flow two. So with that, I've already gone over my self-imposed 10-minute limit. And so I hope to see you in the next videos.